Dancing with me, oh boy I thought my world could say that you Were the best for me All of my life I've been waiting And I there'll be no hesitation, no oh boy When you're with me, oh boy I thought my world could say that you Were the best for me Stars appear and the shadows are falling my heart's a calling A little bit of love It makes everything right I'm gonna see my baby tonight All of my love All of my kissing You don't know what you've been I'm missing, oh boy When you're with me, oh boy I thought the world could say that You were a bit for me Hi, I'm Chris Christopherson, and it's my pleasure to be your host for this celebration of the music and the legend of Buddy Holly and the Crickets. It's been over 25 years since Buddy Holly died in an airplane crash on a cold winter day in Iowa. But the music will never die. Tonight, some of his family and his friends and his fans have gotten together to remember Buddy and to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the Crickets. When That'll Be The Day came out in 1957, the Crickets became the number one rock and roll band in the world. They were the first band to be completely self-contained, writing and playing and producing and recording their own material, just like the Beatles. In fact, the Beatles said they got the idea for their name from the Crickets. After Buddy Holly's death in 1959, the Crickets continued a career that spanned 30 years and millions of records. It's appropriate we start our show tonight with the original American rock and roll band. Jerry Allison, Joe B. Malden, and the newest member, Gordon Payne. Ladies and gentlemen, the Crickets. and roll favorites, Summertime Blues.
said, no dice, son, you got to work late. Sometimes I wonder what I'm going to do, but there ain't no cue for the summertime blues. But you're too young to vote. Sometimes I wonder what I'm gonna do, but there ain't no cure for the summertime blue. And my mama and papa told me, son, you gotta make some money. If you're gonna use a car, go around right next to me. Well, I didn't go to work. Cause you didn't work a little Sometimes I wonder what I'm gonna do But there ain't no cure for the summertime blue Jerry Allison on vocals Toby Maldon on bass this one about Jerry's first ex-wife, Peggy Sue. If you do, Peggy Sue, then you know why I feel blue without Peggy. My Peggy Sue. Oh, well, I love you, gal. Yes, I love you, Peggy Sue. Peggy Sue. Peggy Sue, oh, how my heart yearns for you, oh, Peggy, oh, my Peggy Sue, oh, well, I love you, gal, yes, I love you, Peggy Sue, Peggy Sue, Peggy Sue, pretty, 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 pretty Peggy Sue, oh, Peggy, oh, my Peggy Sue, oh, 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 Pretty, pretty Peggy Sue, oh, oh Peggy, my Peggy Sue. Oh, 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 well, I love you, yeah. I love you, Peggy Sue. Oh, well, I love you, girl, and I want you, Peggy Sue. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have three records going right now, and uh, of course the first one was That'll Be The Day, it's yes, the first one we released, one. and uh, then we have a new one out by the Crickets called Oh Boy and Not Fade Away. Joe Malden, he plays bass, and uh, Jerry Allison plays drums. We sure had a lot of fun there in a short time. And we, we also, when we weren't working, like doing jobs around the studio or something. We spent an awful lot of time together just hanging out, say, in the car or over at one of us, one of our houses and uh, just picking, playing things. Oh, yeah, that was, was a perfect situation because we were doing what we liked and and uh, we didn't have anything to go by, like know what we were supposed to do and not supposed to do. And, uh, you know, we said, well, heck, why don't we try to write some songs? While we were practicing, we'd just sit around and say, somebody have an idea and just fool with it back and forth. and, and uh, Or maybe somebody would have a come up with an idea that they'd been thinking of for a few days and have a verse written and uh, then everybody would work on it. Our buddy came up with the idea to write That'll Be The Day because they'd been to see the movie The Searchers that day and uh, then like on Well All Right, uh, Little Richard, uh, when we were performing with him at the Brooklyn Paramount, was all the time saying, well, all right. And uh, so, you know, it suddenly that was a great phrase to write a tune to it. J.I. and, and uh, Buddy got together and uh, 
one night, and they were talking about what to name the group, and they said, would they like the spiders? And so they said, insects, that'd be good. So that's really how the name the crickets came They said, insects, huh, the crickets. Buddy gave me a feeling that I could be myself and do what I wanted to do because it looked like he was doing what he wanted to do. Joe B. reminded me of something when he was talking about uh, like not being inhibited because Buddy, like if we were uh, like practicing in my, in my folks' living room or uh, just anywhere in, in the garage where we happened to be practicing, I mean, he might jump around like Elvis Presley and being dead serious, not being silly, just because he felt like doing that, like putting on a show just during a rehearsal, you know, and he wasn't ever sitting around going, you know, just really drug. He was, you know, he was, he really felt like rocking and rolling. We all decided to move to New York, and uh, we even called Norman, Norman Petty back in Clovis, our manager, and uh, and told him that Joe B and I flew home, and Buddy had his car up there, and he drove home. And Joe B and I went over to Clovis in the meantime, and Norman said, I don't think you want to move to New York, and he actually, uh, Joe B and I were pretty uh, wishy-washy at the time, but anyway, that's when you know Norman said, oh, you, you guys ought to stay down here. And so we ended up staying down there. That was a big, and we sort of, I sort of didn't want to move to New York anyway. And get, and I'd just gotten married, and Buddy just gotten married. And like you said, things weren't quite like they had, it, you know, wasn't fun hanging out together all the time. That was definitely a low point. Oh, one of the high points, like Waylon calling about, uh, in 1970, sometimes 78, and saying, hey, you want to go on the road for a couple of days? We were on the road for about five years with Waylon. And got mixed up with Gordon. He started sitting in and playing with the crickets. And uh, it's sure fun to me that because all that stuff had happened back then and uh, that we can go out and have fun and play rock and roll music now. This next guy is a personal hero of mine. He literally grew up with the legend of Buddy Holly. They shared the same hometown of Lubbock, Texas, so the Holly influence was everywhere. He was a singer, songwriter, guitar player. Buddy Holly was king. And Joe Ely is the keeper of the faith of that rockin' legacy. Here's Joe Ely and the Crickets. Yeah! I grew up in, I grew up in Lubbock, Texas. I grew up listening to these guys. It's good to be up here playing with them. Take this joint.
in the hearts and souls of everybody here forever. Thank you. If you were alive in the past couple of decades, your consciousness bears the stamp of this next man's music. Original, joyous rock and roll with a sound that's distinctly his own in songs that become our hymns. He joins us now for his tribute to the sound from Lubbock, Texas that changed the course of popular music forever. Here's John Fogarty.
so easy to fall in love. It's so easy to fall in love. I just want to say I'm really happy to be part of this, but he was a great big influence on me and the guys in that band way back when. When I was a little bitty baby, my mama would rock me in the cradle, in them old cotton fields back home. It was Texarkana in their own cotton field back home. Now when them cotton balls get rotten, you can't pick very much cotton in their own cotton field back home. It was down in Louisiana just about a mile Texarkana in them old cotton fields back at home. Buddy Holly and the Crickets, a tribute will continue. Thank you. Thank you very much. Brave on, brave on and tell me, tell me, not to be lonely. Tell me, you love me only. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We're going 
coming right back to Buddy Holly. Baby, when you make me cry, you say you're gonna leave. Song all the way through. He was real good. He was, really had the talent. Buddy didn't care about the violin much, and uh, he was on one little show with me and Travis. We was on some shows, uh, amateur shows and stuff. And we put grease on his bow so he wouldn't make any noise. <laughs> but we won that night. I think it was on account of Buddy because he was the cute. I did teach him basics, basics on the guitar, and that uh, more or less started him out. But he far surpassed me in later years. He and the guys he sang with, Jerry Allison and Joe B. Malden, they were not very popular with the school teachers. <laughs> they sang a little bit uh, uh, risky songs. <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't seem risky now. They were on a school program one day, and I was there, the whole school, and uh, and they sang about their teacher. I forget now what it was. It was... <laughs> it was too old to cut the mustard. Too old to cut the mustard. <laughs> no. uh -huh. she's, she's too old to cut the mustard anymore. And they were really shocked, you Well, know. the schools were changing at that time quite a bit, too. Everything was changing. Maybe, baby, I'll have you. I'd start writing a little song. He'd come along, pick it up, and say, what's this? And he'd carry it on off with him, and he'd kind of rearrange it and add to it. He saw it, and he says, what's that? And I said, that's the song I'm writing for you. He said, let me see it. And it was titled, Maybe Baby. So he finished it up. I just wrote the title. <laughs> The Arthur Murray Dance Party presented Buddy Holly and the Crickets in late 1957. This rare film is courtesy of Dick Clark's Best of Bandstand Home Video. Now if we're ready for our rock and roll specialist, we have Buddy Holly and the Crickets. met Buddy when I was working at Southern Music Publishing Company. I was a uh, receptionist and also uh, the interesting part was that I used to mail the uh, demos to the radio stations. So um, when he came in that day, um, he had an interview with Maury Deutsch and uh, I actually didn't know who he was. I never heard of Buddy Holly at that time. Right away, they started flirting with me. They, the three of them started, you know, trying to get my attention. And um, I just, you know, trying to be nice. But anyway, Buddy says, well, guys, step aside. She's going to go out with me. So we had lunch, and from there he said, well, how would you like to go? And, and I have to buy some uh, strings for my guitar. Would you walk with me? And I said, well, I don't have that much time, but if it's not too far, then I'll walk with you so um, that's what I did and while we were going there he asked me for dinner and during the course of the dinner we were talking about different things and all of a sudden he came and said well I have to go on tour tomorrow and I wouldn't have time to come back and see you but I certainly would like uh, to find out if you would marry me and all of a sudden I said, well, my aunt was right. These people are crazy. I mean, for this guy to ask me off the bat like that, I'd like you and I to get married. I said, well, okay. I said, I think I'll follow him. So I said, okay, um, tomorrow will be all right. I went to Lubbock and got married at his house with his minister. 
The uh, honeymoon was a very strange one from the beginning because uh, Jerry, one of the uh, crickets, uh, has just gotten married before uh, Buddy did, and his wife, uh, Peggy Sue, um, came along into our honeymoon uh, plans, and uh, they wanted to, for us to be together. And uh, that's what they did. They came along, and we went all the four off went to Acapulco. I like all of Buddy's songs. They were different. Each one of them was different. And uh, that's one of the things that people notice in Buddy's music, that none of his songs are the same. And, uh, uh, but there was one song that Buddy always uh, dedicated to me and that I really, really fell in love with, his true love ways. Just you know why. You know, I found out how people loved him and um, how much they love his music. And it's a consolation because, you know, in my, in my mind, and I'm sure of it, the rest of the family, you know, he, in a way you could say he didn't die for nothing because actually when he died, he was on tour doing what he really loved the most, performing. And uh, so I, you know, to me, it's uh, it's something that, in a way, I I feel like I'm carrying on what he left. 